Welcome to Lesson 9e, Pump Scaling Laws. In this lesson, we'll review dimensional analysis by applying it to pump performance curves. We'll discuss the pump affinity laws and apply them to design pumps. And we'll do an example problem. We'll start with dimensional analysis. Let's start with the net head of the pump. Gravitational constant G and net head H typically occur together. So in our functional relationship, we use GH as the dependent variable and it's a function of volume flow rate, pump diameter, roughness of the pump walls, rotational speed, density of the fluid, and viscosity of the fluid, where omega is in radians per second, but we often use n dot, which is in RPM. The dimensions of omega are 1 over time, as are the dimensions of n dot. d here is pump diameter, whereas we're used to d being a pipe diameter, so don't confuse those. I'm not going to go through the dimensional analysis, this is good review of the method of repeating variables, which you can try yourself. Here's the result. We have four pi's. gh over omega squared d squared is the dependent pi. We have three independent pi's. We do another dimensional analysis with brake horsepower instead of gh as a function of these same variables. When you go through that dimensional analysis, you again get four pi's. The three independent pi's are the same, but the dependent one is now brake horsepower over rho omega cubed d to the fifth. In turbo machinery, we name these pi's. This first one is called the head coefficient, since it's a non-dimensional form of head. The second one is called the power coefficient, Cp, since it's a non-dimensional form of brake horsepower. This first independent variable is called capacity coefficient, which is a non-dimensional volume flow rate. We use CQ rather than CV dot because in turbo machinery Q is used instead of V dot, typically as the volume flow rate. And this word capacity means volume flow rate in pump lingo. When a pump engineer talks about the capacity of a pump, he or she means the volume flow rate going through that pump. This second independent parameter, or pi, is a form of Reynolds number. Omega times D is a speed since omega has dimensions of 1 over time and d has dimensions of length. So it might help to write Reynolds number this way. Reynolds number is density times speed times diameter over mu. And finally, epsilon over d is the roughness ratio, similar to what we did with pipe flow. But this epsilon is now the roughness length inside the pump wall. Using these definitions, we rewrite ch as a function of cq, Reynolds number, and epsilon over d, and similarly for cp. It turns out that for many pumps, the effects of Reynolds number and roughness are small, provided that the Reynolds number is high. And for quick estimates, we can ignore these two parameters in both of these non-dimensional relationships. So CH is approximately a function only of CQ, and CP is approximately a function only of CQ. Finally, pump efficiency is defined as rho V dot GH over BHP. And when we plug in V dot from here, and we plug in GH from here and BHP from here, we get this expression, but densities cancel, omega cubes cancel, the diameters all cancel, and we end up with CQCH over CP. Since CH is a function of CQ and CP is a function of CQ, we see that eta pump is also a function of CQ, the capacity coefficient. Turbo machinery engineers like to talk about the pump affinity laws. I looked up affinity in the dictionary. It's defined as inherent likeness or agreement. So we'll use it this way. If two pumps are geometrically similar and dynamically similar, which by review means that the independent pi's are equal between the two pumps, then their pump performance curves fall on top of each other when plotted non-dimensionally. Here's an example. I'll use blue for pump A. Suppose its performance curves look like this. This is the net head H. This is the efficiency of the pump. And this is the brake horsepower. Suppose pump B is a bigger, heftier pump. It's just a scaled up version of pump A. If we plot these on the same scale in whatever units we're talking about, such as liters per minute, the free delivery of pump A is 3 and the free delivery of pump B is 5. We do likewise with the head and the brake horsepower. So that's the head curve, the BHP curve, and the efficiency curve. These are dimensional plots of H and BHP. Eta pump, of course, is already non-dimensional. Now let's redraw these plots in non-dimensional form. Going back to our equations, instead of head, we'll plot CH, 
instead of volume flow rate we'll plot CQ as our x-axis and instead of BHP we'll plot CP and then eta pump of course is also a function of CQ so the non-dimensional plot will look something like this keeping our color code pump A was blue so this curve is CHA pump B was purple so they fall on the same curve if we have dynamic similarity similarly eta pump A equal eta pump B and CPA equals CPB. The bottom line is that one set of pump performance curves applies to all similar pumps. So we can use this set of pump performance curves to scale our pump up or down. The caveats being that they must be geometrically similar and dynamically similar. For most problems all this means is that the CQs match. But as mentioned before we also have Reynolds number and roughness parameter which also need to be included at small Reynolds number. But we won't look at cases like that. So we can use these relationships to scale up or down our pumps. In turbo machinery jargon, these are called the pump affinity laws. The idea is that if we have CQA equals CQB, which gives us this equation, then CHA equals CHB and CPA equals CPB. And also since the CQs are equal, a to pump A must also equal A to pump B. These three equations are often called the pump affinity laws. This allows us to scale up from small pump A to the larger pump B at some operating point for pump A. For example, this operating point at V dot A H A, there is a corresponding operating point for pump B, namely V dot B and H B. But in our non-dimensional plot, both of these would occur at the same point the corresponding point in pump B and pump A are called homologous points. That's just a fancy way of saying that they're the same on these non-dimensional plots. In other words, if CQA equals CQB, then CHA equals CHB, and CPA equals CPB, and the pump efficiencies are also equal at these homologous points. Let's do a little bit of algebra. CQA is V dot A over omega A DA cubed, and at homologous points, this is also equal to V dot B over omega B DB cubed, which we write as V dot B over V dot A equal omega B over omega A DB over DA cubed. This is our first affinity law. When I scroll up, you can see that this is this equation. In an exactly similar way, we get these two equations. If we put an exponent 1 on the omega b over omega a term in the first equation, we see that we have an exponent of 1, 2, and 3 on the ratio of omegas, which is the angular velocity or rotation rate of the pumps. There's a very immediate application. If we're talking about the same pump, so the diameters are all the same and the same fluid, so the densities are all the same, and the only thing we change is the rotation rate of the pump, we see that volume flow rate goes up by this ratio to exponent 1, head goes up by this ratio to exponent 2, and power goes up by exponent 3. There's an old jingle that goes very hard problems are as easy as 1, 2, 3. It's just an easy way to remember this for the case where you have the same pump and you're just changing the rotation rate. V stands for volume flow rate, H stands for head, and P stands for power. So volume flow rate changes by exponent 1, head by exponent 2, and power by exponent 3. For example, if we double the RPM, just increase the RPM by a power of 2, we see from these equations that V dot goes up by a factor of 2 to the 1 or 2, net head goes up by a factor of 2 to the 2 equal 4, and BHP goes up by a factor of 2 to the 3 or 8. So if you have the same pump and all you do is double the rotation speed of the impeller, you get twice as much volume flow rate and you produce four times as much head, but it's going to cost you eight times as much power. Let's do an example problem, scaling up a pump using these affinity laws. We have an existing pump A. We give DA, the rotation rate, in RPM, and these values at BEP. We want to design a new larger pump, I'll call B, that's geometrically similar with a bigger diameter, using the same fluid, but rotating at a higher RPM as well. Let's predict the volume flow rate and the net head for pump B at its BEP. And let's estimate the percent increase in required brake horsepower from pump A to pump B. Here's our affinity laws. 
we'll apply these at homologous points where the two turbines are dynamically similar. So V dot B is V dot A times the ratio of omegas times the ratio of diameters cubed. We want to use N dot, so we'd have to convert using 2 pi radians per rotation and 1 minute per 60 seconds. But since we'd be applying these unity conversion ratios on both the numerator and denominator, the 2 pi's, the 60's, and these units all cancel out. So we can write this as V dot A, N dot B over N dot A, DB over DA cubed. This is the case only if you do the same thing on the numerator and denominator, so be careful. Using the given values, we calculate V dot B as V dot A, times the ratio of RPMs, times the ratio of diameters cubed, and we get this value. So we predict to three digits that V dot B is 1070 cubic centimeters per second. Compared to V dot A, this is more than twice as much volume flow rate, even though the diameter has gone up by only a factor of 26%. That's because of this cubed exponent. Similarly, using the second affinity law, we write HB equal HA, N dot B over N dot A squared, times DB over DA squared. I'll spare you all the details. When you plug in the numbers, we get HB equal 3.12 meters, which is also more than twice as much as the net head of pump A. Part B is to estimate the percent increase in brake horsepower required. To do that, we'll use the third affinity law and solve for BHPB over BHPA. So I rewrote the affinity law. In this problem, row B is equal to row A. If row B and row A were different, you'd just plug their values in. But here, this term is just one. In other words, the pump affinity laws apply even between different fluids, leaving out the units since we have the same units on the top and bottom. I get a ratio of 5.0739, which is approximately five times as much power. The percent increase is BHPB minus BHPA over BHPA times 100%, which we can rewrite as BHPB over BHPA minus one, quantity times 100%. And plugging in this number for the ratio BHPB over BHPA, we get a 407% increase in brake horsepower. This number is so large because of these exponents 3 and 5. Even though we haven't increased the RPM all that much and the diameter is up by only 26%, we have over 400% increase in brake horsepower to run pump B. I'll close by saying that this is pretty typical in engineering. Once you have a pump that works, and this applies to other devices too, and you want to scale it up, you typically don't start with a blank page and redesign the pump. You take an existing pump and scale it, and these affinity laws come in handy for doing that. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.